Hello everyone, and this is a special short episode of History After Hours. My name is Kevin Pumphrey, and with me is... Ron Franklin. And the question is, what is History After Hours, and who are these guys? We have just been made available on multiple platforms, so we thought we would take this opportunity to explain who we are, what our background is, and a little bit about what we're hoping to accomplish with the podcast. So, the uh, basic thing is we're both history teachers in Arkansas at a little place called Lakeside High School, a decent-sized school. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the categories are for each state, but we have roughly what? eight, nine hundred students in 10 through 12. Mm -hmm. So I teach uh, mainly AP U.S. history and Mr. Franklin teaches mainly world, AP world and Euro. And we're going to get into a little bit of that. But just as an introduction, I just want us to each talk a little bit about our background. So Mr. Franklin, tell us a little bit about how you got to this point in your life. Yeah, well, well, also, I want to say that, you know, one of the reasons we're doing this extra intro is uh, there have been people who followed us in the past, but on these new platforms, there may be new people who come in and it says season five, and all of a sudden you're like, well, who, <laughs> how do we get to season five? You know, wh who are these guys? So a little bit of the background information uh, is important. Um, Teaching is actually a second career for me. Um, I was in retail management for uh, a number of years, and then that grind became, I don't know, it was, I was tired of it tell you the truth and so my wife has taught for 20 something years and she convinced me that I would be good at it and I never thought that maybe that was true because uh, I never I never really thought about teaching as a career um, but I fell in love with history um, and decided to, to pursue that and uh, I taught at another school for about five years and got my feet wet basically and a position to open up here at the high school I had taught middle school before and uh, a position to open up here and I thought well man that's a great opportunity I wanted to teach older students, and especially for history. I, to me, you, if you can get an older group of students, then you can really dig down into why things are happening in the, in the deeper conversations. And, and you don't have to hold back as much. Like when you tell stories to younger kids, you're not gonna tell them some of the you know, intensities that we get into in, in these bigger classes with older students. So that's appealing to me as well. So um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to teach multiple AP classes. Um, I started teaching AP European history, um, and then we added in AP world history. And this year I picked up AP art history, and I'm lo loving that too. So um, so it, I come at this with multiple perspectives. From a, from a world history stance, I try very hard to know as much as I can about as many cultures as I can. Because when I was a kid, if I was in a world history class, I remember them basically saying, well, here's America, and maybe we touch these places around the world, and that's how they counted that as world history. And that is so not it. Uh, nobody ever taught me Asian history. Nobody ever taught me African history. Nobody ever taught me Polynesian history. Nobody ever taught me South American history. I didn't even know much about Mexico, and they're right next door. you know. Uh, so uh, I want to correct that. Uh, my, my goal is to know, and, I, and I don't, I'm not saying I know everything, but I, I know a lot more than I was ever taught, and I try to push uh, for a wider range of knowledge for my students so that they can have good decisions, uh, that they can make good decisions based on lots of information that they now have, and, and see the world as a community rather than, uh, than all of these groups that have lived in isolation for so long and need to fight. Uh, really, the, the concept that if you know more about each other, then the better off you'll actually be I, I, I hold that, I think that's very true. Mm -hmm. And so I push that, and not, not that I want to change anybody's belief systems or way of thinking, except for the fact that I want them to think more clearly and know when they're being duped, know when they're being propagandized to, know when somebody's trying to manipulate them, and then they can then make good decisions based on a wealth of knowledge that they have to draw from. How many years have you been teaching at this point? This, uh, I've been at Lakeside for 11 years, and I taught for five years um, before that. So, um, yeah, this is my 16th year. My wife's, this is her 20, uh, 25th or 26th year. So, like I said, she's been in a, a lot longer. But and two kids that are now adults? Yeah, both my kids came through this system. Um, my son is now 21. Uh, my daughter is uh, 25 and about to get, well, yeah, 
about 25 and she's married and she we have a grandchild on the way so that's a new experience for us as well i'm excited about that we got to remember this so that grandchild when they grow up they can <laughs> listen to this podcast yeah. and go hey i wasn't even born yet yeah right scarlet grace she's on her way we're waiting that's awesome um hobbies uh, to speak of travel i mean w- when i when i was in retail i didn't get time to do much of what i wanted to i didn't see my family much i, I averaged about 96 hours a week um, in management. And so now that my, and because my wife and I both teach, it's extraordinary. And we've got to spend a lot more family time. And one of the things we like to do is just go explore our state, go explore our region, go explore the country. We've been outside the country now, you know, partially thanks to you. I mean, the, the traveling with, uh, we, we, we are associated with, uh, international travel, um, so it's been great. I, that's my that's my biggest hobby. We like to go snorkeling. We like to hit as many beaches as we can. Oh, yeah. you know, and so. it makes you a better teacher. Yeah, seeing those places has really opened my eyes. Uh, like I think when we went to Italy for the first time, um, because we do teach quite a bit of Roman stuff uh, in the uh, world and in Euro, uh, seeing the land, knowing where things are in association with other issues, you know. Like, hey, I can talk more about the Roman Forum because I've stood there, and it makes it more real to me, which then I can, you know, open that up to other students, and maybe they can visualize it. Maybe that'll encourage them to go and visit places as well. You know, maybe places that that they've, they've had, the, you know, their curiosity's been piqued about some culture. They want to go experience that, and there are ways to do that. Some, I think some kids, uh, maybe especially lower socioeconomic kids, never really think much about, well, I could go here or I could go there. Something may may seem like it's out of reach when really if you work at it it's not that difficult to get some places yeah you know so uh, the the idea about opening doors and opening opportunities for people that's really what that's our big big push of what we're trying to accomplish yeah okay well a little bit about my background um born and raised in arkansas um and didn't want to teach didn't have any desire to ever be a teacher i was an athlete i wanted to be a coach got into teaching just because you have to teach something had a great mentor teacher at Sheridan High School where I started uh, named Bill Remo, who's still teaching, and got me to go on these trips. So you can see how influential one, one person can be. Um, and just his passion for teaching and for his subject made me try harder. And within a few years, I liked the classroom more than I did any of the coaching I was doing. Eventually, I moved and got an opportunity to work on my master's degree and went to different schools and then about seven years ago, I had an opportunity to come here, and I did, and I'm so glad because I met you and I met all the, the people, and, you know, I'll put our history department up against not any not just anybody in Arkansas, but anybody nationwide. I think up and down, you know, we're in a unique situation where we have 8th grade through 12th grade all kind of in the same building, and I think up and down, everybody in the department really does what the, they think is best for the kids. So I've enjoyed teaching. I get better at it every year. I, you probably feel the same way. That's the great thing about history is you just learn more and more. And I'm kind of like you. I want kids to open up their brains a little. Obviously, we teach you know, 15, 16, 17-year-olds. Sometimes their beliefs, their thoughts have never been challenged. They've never had to think about the other side of things. Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of like you. I want to open up, crack that nut, s- let them uh, – see what else is out there let them form their own arguments and uh, try to expose them to as much american history is kind of what i teach and you come from the world side so you know that's what i i I think that's what makes our collaboration so uh, special as well is that we we can tell the same story from different sides of the ocean perhaps and then give kids a lot more to to think about and again i and i and we've had this conversation before i'm not trying to tell people what to think I'm giving them options to think about and then let them yeah. form up their, you know, y- I want you to become a sensible, reasonable, rational adult who can who can argue a point without being argumentative. Right. Is that right? I mean, without being, har- sometimes they think arguing means that you have to be harsh and mm-hmm. people are yelling. But uh, so that's part of the skill set that we're trying to develop as well. But I, I agree, the collaboration here, this is this is unique, I think. Uh, we've We've got a really good thing going. Yeah, and when I ask you about hobbies, it made me think I used to be the Da Vinci of the people I knew. I, I was, a, you know, I, I played sports, like I said, so I was always into, like, basketball leagues and all that. And But then I was also a power lifter, weightlifter for a while. And then music was a thing I was always into. 
and you know there's other things but i do want to shout out to my band sensory too because i'm still in a band <laughs> I've, been t- I've been in a band a long as just as long i started officially as i guess a professional musician somebody that gets paid to play the same year i started teaching mm-hmm. which is interesting to think that i've now been playing that long 18 yeah, yeah. 19 years that yeah I've we've been, been able to see you guys y'all are good um so I think that's one thing that makes us unique coming together is our different experiences because you come from more of a business background uh, and I come from, I've been basically an institutionalized teacher my entire life. I grew up on a farm, but then, and so I think what started the whole podcast, so let's just get into it. What mm-hmm. is history after hours? It was me and I still live about 40, 45 minutes from school. And I started listening to different podcasts. And this has, this has got to be seven, six, seven years ago when I first started coming here. It's a great way to pass the time. And we started having very interesting conversations in the hall because we our classes ended up being right beside each other eventually. And I've just, it hit me. I thought, how hard would it be for us to start recording a podcast? I, I can't believe it's been five years now. Right. But I just thought maybe if we could record and just give the students an opportunity to hear some of our side conversations, maybe they would uh, pique an interest. And uh, at least here, it's been really successful. Right. We've the the podcast has morphed between just me and you doing this. This is what we did really the first year was debated (laughs) political topics with with borrowed equipment that sometimes didn't work as well. If you listen to the early ones, they're a little like the technological aspect of oh it. yeah Isn't that i was so editing right? it trying to throw it together and throw it online <laughs> and we didn't and know what we were doing we didn't know what we were doing we <laughs> now have a producer producer we have people work that work on the artwork and the cover you know we get thank goodness right <laughs> right <laughs> um and i think right now we're in a point where we're still doing some of the me and you talk about current events and politics and and whatever but what has been really fun has been incorporating other teachers and other people mm-hmm into the podcast to do live shows in front of students where the students ask questions. So when you're listening to these, sometimes it will say live. Generally, that means we're either at school in front of our own students as we go through the class day, or the first Thursday of every month, we record live at a coffee shop called Collective Coffee, and our students will show up in droves out there, maybe for the 10% discount. And it's too, yeah. Yeah, and it's grown every year. It's wall to wall. And and the cool thing about the podcast from our perspective is we don't know what they're going to ask. You know, and yeah, we had um, we've had someone visit before and they're like, what, what, how do you guys plan this out ahead of time? I'm like, we don't. And that that it's a little nerve wracking to an extent, but it's also the the edge that makes it cool for me is like you don't know what they're going to say. Maybe it's going to be a super challenging question. Maybe it's going to be silly, but at the same time, we'll try to give it a serious answer. Yeah, and I think us both being history teachers, and once again, I think it's very unique that I'm a U.S. guy. That's what I teach. I teach a advanced placement U.S. history. You teach the AP world and Euro and AP art history, which is a world perspective. I think that those two perspectives are cool uh, analyzing issues, but I think also just being history teachers, you know, history is the study of people. Mm-hmm. And you think deeply about all sorts of issues. It's not like we are one subject. We really are just teaching people. Them all. We're teaching them all yeah. in some ways, right? And so I think that helps us uh, better answer some of the questions that kids are interested in. The other thing I like about the podcast, just generally, but also when we do the live ones, is that it allows students a chance to see us in a different, not just a different venue, but maybe even a different light. Like we're, we're people. And I don't know that, I think about my school experience, like I didn't associate well with the teachers that I had because they were almost like foreigners in a sense, not because they were adults, but because they just didn't try to associate with us on a different level. Hmm. And we never had conversations. And the conversations that we have in class to build a Socratic method or whatever we're trying to do is also very sort of formulaic. But when we're out in the public or we're having these sort of uh, side ones that we do here at school with a live audience, like it, the the vibe is different, and these I are think, human beings. Yeah, and they are. Yeah, they they see us all, still as teachers, but also as someone that they feel more comfortable asking questions with. And how and I think that's actually helped our reputation grow, and more pe- more kids want to be in our classes because of that, which I think is really cool. So that we're we're obviously hitting a, a nerve somewhere, 
uh, and, a, and a positive vibe that comes from this because kids are like, when's the next podcast? When's the next podcast? You know? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting, too, because a lot of teachers think, well, you go to school, you teach, you leave, and then that's it. But we're teachers pretty much all the time. When I'm playing music, I'll have discussions about history. When, I'm, when we're traveling overseas in one of our crazy spring break trips, we're talking history. I yeah, mean, this is who we are. It just comes out of us. If you look back, folks, if you that are, that are maybe new to the podcast, if you'll go back into some of the other platforms that we have and look for the earlier seasons, like we've taken these, we've recorded in, in London and Paris. We've recorded in, in Italy. You know, kids, have, we just came out of the Vatican or whatever, and kids are like, oh, here's what I experienced. And it's, it's really neat to see them, like those shows on the road, especially. Yeah, and, you know, our kind of goal for this year and the upcoming years, I think, is to keep doing what we're doing, the good stuff that we think is uh, really hitting the kids and helping. Uh, but we're going to try to start bringing in more people to interview. Mm -hmm. We're going to have more people on the live podcast. We still love the student-driven podcast where they're coming up with the topics to discover. And listen, they ask every type of question from zombies to greatest president <laughs> to – you know, whatever. Um, and it's interesting because they'll expose us to stuff that we look at each other and go, I've never heard of that. Have yeah. you? And yeah. Have you noticed that these past two there, I think there's like this interesting, I think they work on it ahead of time where they're like, okay, what can we ask him? What, what was the coolest question I could ask? You know? Yeah. And it's gotten, it's fun for, I think everybody. So if you, if you live around this area, I would encourage you to come out and, and check out a live podcast at collective. There might be other venues that we, reach out to before long once a month is is kind of where we're at right now um of course me and my wife are in the process of trying to move here that can open up some more possibilities for sure, me so yeah. i don't live 45 right. minutes away um but yeah we're, we're going to try to get community people in and, and even students we've we've done this before where we've gotten student leaders in on the podcast and that's that's another different kind of vibe you know and obviously it takes a lot of courage for a high school student to right to do this um, so we're going to see where this takes us. I, I've really enjoyed the podcast. Like I said, every episode is so different because the topics are never the same. Mm -hmm. And it's not just politics. It's not just history. Uh, but we view everything with our historical knowledge. Everything has a lens of history. I mean, listen, to know nothing of before, you remain a child. I believe Cicero said that. Um, we, you know, the more we know about our past and about history, the more analytical we can be about any topic they bring to us because right. we're always going to view it through our knowledge of history. I, I had a kid one time who said, why do I need to know about all these dead guys? They, they're yeah. not, right, I'm, they're hundreds of years ago. Why do I care? It's because they are us. The, their lives echo what we deal with today, and if we can learn from what they've done, then we can be better suited to handle whatever things come our way. You know, you've you've seen this before. Ah, here's the pattern, and and like people say, well, history repeats. No, but patterns do. Yeah. You know, patterns do repeat, and you can see that if you study enough. And then you, because you, so you're really studying yourself, regardless of which group we're talking about or which age. And so that's what's it's still relevant, no matter. And you do live in a society. You have to you have to deal with other people, and this is a way to learn about that as well. Yeah, and every the more you know about the past history, I mean, it makes life more interesting. It makes Family Guy and South Park and movies. When, you get when, more references. When I was going through my, my master's degree and you were doing your extra uh, uh, master's work, mm -hmm. th the idea that there's always so much more to learn. Like you open up, there, it's infinitely fascinating that there's, we number one, we add to history every day, so there's more to teach and know. But then you look back, and there's always these little paths that open up, and you go, oh, my God, there's this thing that I didn't know about. Oh, yeah. yeah you, you can't run Every out year. of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, look, if you enjoy the podcast, we want to hear from you. We've got a few avenues that you can comment. You can, you can find us on Twitter at History After Hours. We have a Facebook page that you can comment on that we can look at. Uh, we're on all the major platforms now as far as where you get your podcast. Uh, reach out to us, YouTube, comment. We have a YouTube channel. YouTube channel, History After Hours. Um, let us know what you think. Give us some topics. If you want to see something specific, let us know that. Uh, share our podcast with your, with your friends. And, um, yeah, it's two history teachers rambling on about various topics. Good times. Good times. See you later.